Welcome back everybody. So today we're working on an Amana furnace. Um, it's actually our second call out here. First one we diagnosed a oh, clogged drain line on the furnace side itself going to the trap from the collector box. Uh, furnace got waterlogged, drained out the inducer motor, cleaned the trap, cleaned all the drain lines, ports, Ended up finding that the vacuum switches, pressure switches, were waterlogged. Tried blowing them out, got them up and running for a little bit, um, but they were definitely slow opening and slow shutting. So we called Amana. They are going to warranty it out. Uh, there's about a week left of warranty left on this furnace for these customers. We did not install this, but we are going to try to save them as much as we can. So you see me taking out the first one with a quarter inch. Uh, screw head they have two flathead screws on these Amana furnaces same with Goodman and the Dykens we are pulling this out this is the collector box switch right now it's just a single port usually you just have two wires off of your main switch uh, they do share a common you'll see me pull this out normally what I like to do unscrew the old one Screw the new one right back into that position before pulling anything apart. I think I had to remove this air hose out of the way, a vacuum hose. Get the screw in there. I like mounting my pressure switches with the nozzle pointing down. So if there is ever water that comes and backlogs into that line at all, it's not going to waterlog your trap unless you get condensation moisture going up in there. <clears throat> so we are tightening this up right now. Tighten that bottom screw. There's one on top, one on bottom. We'll pull our wires off of our old switch. Pretty simple. Plug and play. So you get a lot of companies that say, oh, you got a bad switch, let's just replace it. Well, the issue usually goes a little bit further in depth than that. It's usually a drain line issue or a venting issue, perhaps. There's a lot of variables into it. So now we're going to take off the main. This is the low fire and high fire pressure switch. Just one screw holding this on, but it is a double. So it has a bracket in between the two pressure switches. You'll see with these, I know it's really hard to tell on the camera. One screw there, but there's a T. So they do share a common vent port. Those kind of just slid right back in there. Again, I'm leaving the old one hooked up. I have the new one mounted in place. This is why there's no confusion, anything else of existing wiring. We're going to swap our tubing port. Give us a little bit more slack on that unit. Plug that in up top where that T is. And then we're going to start undoing our wiring. Once again, undo wires. They are color coded, so you gotta make sure your low fire is your low, your high is your high. And they are always labeled on your electrical wiring diagram if you do forget which way they go or if they are not correct from a previous company. I've had that plenty of times. So plug your wires onto your new. This is very important that these wires go on that side. If it tries to start up in low fire or high fire, then, you know, if your switches are reversed, just say low fire and your high pressure switch isn't making because your wires are swapped, it's going to kill that furnace or not let it start up at all. I do apologize for the lighting in this video. Eventually we're going to have a little better 
camera set up just using my phone for now. Might be getting out the GoPro with a light on it. Maybe that'll help a little bit more for future videos. Or possibly even wearing a helmet or a head strap for camera. Get a kind of a first person perspective of what I'm doing. So we are checking pressure ports right now, drain lines, making sure everything else is clear, even though I cleaned them out last time. I want to make sure there's no other clogs in this furnace before I start it back up. Especially in the collector boxes. You want to check, make sure there's no debris in there. It's a big call that we get. Once I'm done checking with all this, we're going to push that one back in there. Flip furnace power on. We're going to start this up, let it cycle from the thermostat. So our pressure switches are making. We will not have that igniter powered up if those pressure switches are not closing properly. We should have gas valve here shortly. There's flame, there's gas. We're all looking good. We're definitely pulling out, good exhaust. We're going to go ahead and throw the door back on here. I'm going to make a couple more videos later on diagnosing pressure switches, diagnosing, you know, bad inducer motors that can cause pressure switches, any flooded out furnaces, things of that nature. I'm going to make more and more of these videos, so let us know what you guys think. And again, I would like to create better and better contact for the YouTube community and hopefully help out some families, get your furnaces up and going and, you know, save maybe some bad companies out there that are trying to uh, do the runaround on some customers that don't deserve it, I'll tell you that. So let us know what you think and we'll keep pumping them out. Have a good one.